And we learn not because we're trying to make straight A's and get into top universities, but because like this is a gift given from Allah. It's um, an amana that we're given. And um, like life is just really beautiful. It's exciting. And we should be pursuing that knowledge for, I think, reasons that align with our purpose and not just because we want to go to a top university. This is Raising Mums, the podcast that raises up Muslim mums like you so that you can raise your children well. And here's your host, Dr. Gemma. There is so much untapped wisdom out there in the world, especially from Muslim mothers. In all my years of doing this, working online with homeschoolers all over the world, I have come to realize there are many women who look seemingly very ordinary on the outside, but when you get to know them, they are doing extraordinary things with their children. And in this little corner of the internet that I have, I want to share their wisdom and their insight with you. And this podcast episode today is an interview with one such woman. Her name is Nuseba Kofa Naisa from Nigeria. And I originally met Nuseba when she joined Launch Your Homeschool, my online homeschooling course for Muslim parents. And it has been an absolute pleasure, delight to watch how she has used that program to give her children a truly exceptional education at home. And it's been amazing to watch how she's evolved as a mother. In this interview, she shares some really beautiful insights into the way things have changed for her over the past 18 months of homeschooling, some of the lessons she's learnt, and I just know you're going to love this interview. Let's go. Welcome, Naseba. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So, Naseba, I've already introduced you to the audience before you've come on, but I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and a little bit about your homeschooling journey. Okay, sure. Um, so like you said, my name is Nuseba. I was born and raised in the United States in the state of Florida. Um, and I was born to Nigerian immigrant parents. Um, I was pretty like nerdy growing up, you know, your typical like um, type A type students. So you know, I excelled in school. I was in gifted classes. I ended up going to a top 10 university in the US, um, Duke University. Um, And after I graduated from university, I kind of went on this like soul searching, what I thought would be a gap year. Um, So I moved to Nigeria, my parents' home country for a year. Um, And in that year, I met my husband. It ended up turning into not really one gap year, like a three-year gap trying to figure out life and career. Um, Ended up getting married and moved officially to Nigeria in 2016. Um, and now I have a five-year-old daughter, Khadija, and a two-year-old son, Abdurrahman. Um, regarding homeschooling specifically, so like growing up in the U.S., um, I did know a few homeschooling families, so the idea of homeschooling wasn't exactly foreign to me, um, but my perception of it was very different from my current understanding of homeschooling. So like by that, I mean growing up, homeschooling just felt like this really weird thing, um, And so I remember very vividly, like the same month that I gave birth to my oldest child, um, I was in the car with one of my mom's friends and my daughter had to be like two weeks old at the time. And my mom's friend just kind of mentioned, you know, like you should consider homeschooling your child um, when she gets older. I think it would be like a really great thing given um, how easy it is to access information in this day and age. Um, like she just was really advocating for homeschooling and like as you can imagine when you have a fresh newborn baby and your first time mom like the last thing on your mind is like how you're gonna <laughs> like send that kid to school in a few years um, but she really planted this idea in my head and it just kind of started to germinate over time but I'm really before we go into all your homeschool your how it all began I'd love to know because mm-hmm. you said that you you would you did really well at school that you were in sort of the gifted group and you went off to duke i mean that's Mm -hmm. a big shift then in mentality from 
from sort of being very much in the system and thriving in the system right. to then shifting to a completely different way of looking at education and viewing education. How did that shift happen? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good question. And I get that a lot. Um, so yeah, I did do well in school and I did like school. Like I was definitely more on the nerdy side, but I was very aware and very cognizant of the fact that like that was an exception. Like most of my friends, my siblings, most of the people in my community um, didn't love school. Um, and when I started to like, reflect on it more, I realized that, you know, this drive to excel and this drive to get good grades, is it really rooted in things that matter? Like, am I doing it because I like genuinely love all of these subjects in school and I love staying up and studying and passing all of these exams and getting into these great programs? Or am I doing it because that's just kind of the world that I found myself in um, and my personality type and wanting to, I don't know, maybe a little bit of people pleasing. So it was really, like I was saying, after I graduated, I went on this sort of soul searching mission. Um, and the reality kind of just sort of op opened up to me. Um, okay. And so during these last few, especially I think after becoming a mother, the idea of being very intentional about how I live my life just became very important to me. So when it came to the jobs that I selected, the cities that I wanted to live in, um, the communities that I wanted to be a part of, I became very intentional. Um, and maybe I didn't get it right every time and I wasn't happy in every situation, but um, I would always go back and reflect on what is like my larger purpose? How am I aligning my day to day, my week to week, my year to year with um, what's fulfilling to me? Um, and then I think the realization when my daughter, when her friends started entering school um, and like preschool is like the topic of the year for everyone in my community, the idea of like starting my daughter off on that same kind of rat race that I entered um, just felt really like overwhelming and not exciting at all. Like after I made it through and I was quote unquote successful, the thought of now taking my young three-year-old child and starting her off on this journey um, and having her do the same exact things without really understanding the purpose behind it. I think that is what kind of, um, not kind of, that is what made me take a step back and just think if I'm being more intentional about my life, like let me translate that intentionality into the education of my children as well. I just started asking myself um, a lot of questions like, you know, why are we sending her to school so young? It seems a little bit premature. And what is she, what am I hoping that she's gonna get out of school? Um, what schools do we think will give her um, the best chance of getting those things? And like, the more I looked around and I saw what everyone else was doing, like the less satisfied I became with the answers that were available to me. Um, and then I think going back to this concept of um, Islam and education, like when you, I just, I don't want my kids to compartmentalize uh, subjects in school from Islamic studies. I want them like as sappy and as like hippie as it might sound. I want them to, you know, be like walking outside and like look at the clouds and maybe their science class taught them the different classification of clouds and they, they know that information. But when they see the clouds, they also feel this sort of like spiritual connection, this like sense of taqwa and connection to Allah, like this God consciousness. Um, I want them to do the same when they're like looking at trees or climbing trees or uh, traveling to different places, just knowing that the whole world is here for you to learn from. Um, and we learn not because we're trying to make straight A's and get into top universities, but because like this is a gift given from Allah. It's um, an amana that we're given. And um, like life is just really beautiful. It's exciting. And we should be pursuing that knowledge for, I think, reasons that align with our purpose and not just because we want to go to a top university. I know my audience well now. I know what they're going to be thinking, that that sounds really beautiful. And I think a lot of people can resonate with that, especially this idea of not compartmentalizing education, but bringing in especially bringing in your purpose, you know, when, like you mentioned there, looking up at the clouds, and it's not just about classifying the different types of clouds, um, but actually bringing in an element of spirituality into that and an awareness mm -hmm. of Allah. So how does that, what does that look like, Naseba, in your home? How do you actually do that? Yeah, um, so this was definitely a journey, and I don't want people to assume that 
you just sort of <clears throat> like wake up. I don't want them to assume that you just sort of wake up and you say, you know, I'm going to try to not compartmentalize everything and it's going to start today and be perfect. It definitely is a learning curve. Um, so like while I have these ideas, I very much am in the process of figuring out how do I roll that out and make it make sense and pray that like it just sort of translates into the minds of my kids. So I'll just like preface whatever I'm going to say with that. Um, but I think, and I've been homeschooling for a year and a half. We started in January of 2021. Um, and prior to starting, I just sort of observed how are other people homeschooling? What are the different methods? What are the different curriculum, the resources, the supplies? And I had this like really, I want to say structured approach, but I knew that I shouldn't be too structured. Like I got the message from other homeschooling families that you should just kind of um, go with the flow and do what works for your family. Um, I think it's one thing to hear that and it's a completely different thing to sort of be in it and figure that out mm -hmm. with a firsthand experience. <clears throat> so while I knew that I should sort of relax and take things slowly, our first year of homeschool was still pretty structured. Like I still had the curriculum with the little check boxes that I would check off lesson by lesson. Um, we still started at a certain time. We like did our morning walks by a certain time. We did circle time at a certain time. We read certain books that the curriculums told us to read. Um, and then over time, again, I think it goes back to this idea of being very intentional. I kept revisiting the purpose of the homeschool over and over again until I realized that there's some sort of disconnect happening in my homeschool. Um, and when we really, I think this is where I learned, okay, this is what they mean by slowing down and doing what works for you. We just stopped being so focused on academics and we focused more on just like living life, um, but being very, I don't know if the word is communicative, but like making sure that as we're living life, as we're going about our normal day-to-day -day activities, that I'm pulling my kids along for that ride. We're talking, we're communicating, they're asking questions, I'm giving answers. Um, and I think that is where the more organic, uh, slow paced learning has started to happen. Um, if you look at our homeschool this year compared to last year, they're like two completely different um, approaches. Mm -hmm. Right now, we, um, I think I've learned that the biggest, most important thing in homeschooling is to build a connection with your children. Um, so once I realized that was my foundation and my goal was to not just expose my kids to all of this information, but to enter their world as well, instead of focusing so much on having them like learn this and do this and be a part of this activity, how can I just enter their world, get an understanding of how they see things? Um, what books do they want to read? What um, activities do they want to do? Which science experiments speak to them? Um, what toys do they just naturally gravitate towards? When I learn to just sort of enter their world um, and in the playing, in the, in the reading books, that's when we talk, they ask questions, they feel open enough um, to sort of go off script and go off the plan for the day. I found that that has been where like the best, most fruitful conversations have come from. And um, that's the information that I feel like my daughter is retaining a lot more than the lessons that we sit down at a table and like sort of work through. I'm not sure if that's making sense. No, it is. So tell us, Naseba, like, what does your typical homeschooling day look like then? Because if it's so organic and you're very much following their interests, do you still have a structure for your day? Yes, definitely. So um, while we're not as structured as we were the first year, I still wouldn't call us an unschooling. I still don't think we follow the unschooling approach where there's um, it's a lot less structured. I think we fall somewhere in the middle. So um, every day, like the most important things for us right now, um, and that my daughter has shown an interest in is learning how to read. So every day we do a little bit of language arts, we do a little bit of math. Um, she does go to madrasa where she learns Quran memorization um, five days a week. Um, and then we talk about while she learns Quran at the Islamic Center, she we talk about um, Islam at home. So like if I notice that, for example, she is having a hard time sharing with her younger brother, um, then maybe like we'll take a few minutes of the day to talk about the importance of sharing and how, um, you know, like empathy and how Allah's happy when you share things that you love, things like that. Um, so 
we have our like core subjects. I think that's the language arts, the math and the Islamic studies. Um, and then every day we kind of add something different to the mix. So maybe one day there's an art project we're working on. Another day there might be a science project. Um, another day we might be like learning handwriting by having her illustrate a story and then write out what's happening in the story. Um, and that's just kind of how we mix in other things. And then we only do school Monday to Thursday. And in all honesty, like school lasts maybe like two to three hours. So it's really not long at all. Um, the rest of the day is really filled with um, um, playing outside. We have a playground in our yard, um, in our neighborhood. I mean, we have friends in the neighborhood. They um, spend a lot of time together as siblings, which I really love. Um, and then on Fridays, they're very special because that's kind of our day to go out into the community for a field trip. Um, so it could be anything from, you know, getting a behind the scenes look at how a restaurant works, maybe the behind the scenes of an art studio, um, just different things that are happening in the environment, museum, uh, galleries, things like that. Um, and I think that has been one of our favorite parts of homeschooling. Do you have much of a homeschooling community where you live? Are there other families local to you who are living the same lifestyle as you guys? Yes. So this was one of the biggest homeschool wins of this year. Uh, so the first year of homeschooling, we really did everything in isolation. And I didn't realize at the time how hard and difficult that was until we started to enter a community of other homeschoolers. Um, so long story short, on January 1st, I launched our Instagram page, because I really felt like um, homeschooling was this beautiful gem. And even if I know that most people don't want to homeschool, I at least want to share this experience with um, like family, friends, and people who might be interested. Um, and so when I launched the page on January 1st, like immediately I started getting messages from people who uh, lived like literally 10 minute, a 10 minute drive away from our house that they also homeschool. And I would have never known this had I not launched that page. Um, there's no, like in Nigeria, especially in Abuja, the city that I'm in, the capital city, there's no, um, there's no like homeschool collective or co-op or things like that. Um, so it was really by just launching this Instagram page and having that page organically just grow that people would start messaging me saying, look, I also homeschool um, and we have a few other friends who homeschool and we'll meet up from time to time. Um, so now I think there's like a monthly cadence where every month we plan a field trip together with the kids. Um, and it's just nice to be a part of that community. And I think um, it just goes a long way in showing me that even if you're doing something that you love, you don't have to do it in isolation. Like it's just so much easier, so much nicer to have a community of people. And none of us homeschool the same way. Like everyone is a different homeschool family. So our how is very different, but our why is very much aligned. Like we know why we're doing it. We're there to help each other out when like we feel like we're in the trenches. Um, if we need a break, it's just nice to have other families that you can um, just speak to and who understand and who can empathize with where you are. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I've noticed something so far in this uh, conversation is that you keep repeating the words intention and purpose and just there you you sort of talked about your why are you able to sort of articulate that for our audience that what is your intention your real purpose uh, behind this decision to homeschool your kids uh yeah I think that's something that I I hold very dear it's at the end of the day I just I feel these children are and Amana from Allah. Um, and my number one goal in educating them is to do my best in raising kids who have taqwa. Um, kids who, whether you're there, they, whether you're around or not, they are very conscious of Allah. They're very conscious of, um, you know, the signs of Allah around them. Everything that they do is really aligned with their purpose as well. Um, I, my kids are still really young. I'm relatively new to parenting, but so I really, I can't say for sure that this is the route that absolutely will work and 100%, um, you know, 20 years from now, I'll, I'll be very satisfied. But I feel like at any given moment, if I know that this is my purpose to raise kids of taqwa and that I am doing what in that moment feels like the best option, then I feel like I'm, I am able to sleep better at night, right? Um, so that's my, my larger purpose to it all. 
Yeah, that's so beautiful. That's really powerful as well. Um, so you spoke about your recent homeschool win was finding this community. Would you be willing to share with us a difficulty that has arisen recently in your homeschool and some steps that you've taken to overcome it? A few months ago, this was earlier uh, 2022, I felt like my daughter was progressing really quickly academically. So she, alhamdulillah, I feel she's also pretty gifted. Um, she is above average in her reading levels and math skills and all the things that you know most parents would want. But I really felt like our connection was taking a hit. Um, I don't know if it was burnout. I don't know if it was losing sight of the purpose and the focus, but I just felt like um, we were moving and we were progressing, but we weren't getting any closer to our goal. We were like progressing towards something that like wasn't even on a, our list of goals to get to. Um, and that's when I just realized again that there needed to be a shift in how we homeschool. Um, and that's how you see, that's how I started to notice that the first year of homeschool is going to look very different from the second year. And that's okay. Um, because I really feel like at the end of the day, if I want to have the best chance of instilling God consciousness to my children and having them feel like they're lifelong learners, that first and foremost, the connection between the parent and the child is really essential. Um, and if you have that solid connection, then we'll be more effective at teaching them whatever it is that we need to teach them as the years go by. Um, yeah, absolutely. So there's a quote that I like that says, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll always remember how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. And I think the same can apply to parenting and to homeschooling. Like your kids are most likely going to forget some of the books that you've read, the curriculum that you've chosen, even like the field trips that they seem to really love. Like one day they might even forget those, but they're always going to remember like what it was like to grow up in this household. They're always going to remember what it was like um, to be around their parents, what it was like to learn alongside their parents. Um, and even if like, you know, this is not what we want, but even if the actual academic lessons don't register very well if you have that strong connection and you can look back in a few years inshallah and say that you know what like those childhood years were really focused on being with my child learning who my child is having my child exposed to my world and knowing who I am aside from the normal stresses of everyday life um, if that connection was really like top of the list when it comes to your successes during your child your kid's childhood um, I think that's first and foremost, like the most important thing that you could work towards. Um, so realizing that, I think having that realization to go back to your question, having that realization that um, we are progressing academically, but our connection seems to be a little bit strained. Um, that was really key for me. And then just being very deliberate about focusing on connection more than um academics even if like for one whole year we didn't pick up a single book but we you know became really close and um I entered her world she entered my world we um became a very bonded family then then I think that goes a long way when I look at your Instagram page I mean something that really strikes me about it is that feeling of connection that you have with your kids and it, you come across as a very joyful, happy mom. I mean, I'm sure you can't be like that all the time because none of us no. are. That's not the human experience. But you do seem to be enjoying motherhood a lot. And I guess that is that is something very important for your children to see, that you, you like to spend time with them. You enjoy their company. Is that, I mean, how does that fit in with your prioritizing connection with your kids? Where do you see the place of joy in your homeschool? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think, again, just if I focus on connection and I focus on making sure that, um, how do I want to say this? If I focus on making sure that my children know what's important versus what's not important, that, you know, Allah, God consciousness, um, looking at the signs of the world around you, being a lifelong learner, learning for the sake of learning and not because we're trying to reach some academic mark by a certain year. 
Um, if I can instill those lessons in them, then everything else just becomes easier. And just to go back to what you were saying before, um, I know Instagram makes it look like, you know, we're jolly and happy all the time. One of the things that I've had to tell people who DM me about this, um, a lot of people will DM me, they'll send me a direct message saying that um, they're interested in homeschooling, but they don't think that they are patient enough to do it, um, that they're nothing like me, like they, they don't feel like they're patient enough to homeschool their kids. And I have to be very honest with them and say, um, like, I, I don't know how to stress this enough, but one of my biggest weaknesses is impatience. Like I'm actually a very naturally impatient person. Um, but one thing that I found is that if, again, I'm, I'm focused on my purpose of why I'm homeschooling, um, if I'm reading to my child or I'm teaching my child phonics and they're struggling, if I lose my patience in that moment, like everything about my purpose of wanting them to love learning, I'm just kind of tossing out the window. So in another, another way of putting it is that homeschool has forced me to work on my impatience in a way that I feel like I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and when I think about it that way, like homeschooling is not just about raising your children or teaching your children. It's actually about growth for yourself as a parent and growth of the family as a collective unit. Like we're learning together. Maybe she's learning her ABCs and I'm learning patience, um, but we're there struggling together, learning together. We have high moments, we have low moments, but as a family, like we are progressing um, baby steps, baby steps, day by day, week by week. Um, and I don't know, it's just such a beautiful concept to me to think that homeschooling really, I think this is also borrowed from Charlotte Mason, that you don't just educate a child. It's not just about speaking to a child's mind. It's about educating the whole child. Um, and I think if you, if you take it a step further, it's actually about educating the whole family and um, learning what are your weaknesses and how can you work together to just make sure that as a family, no matter what pace you're at, you're just constantly improving and working towards whatever goals that you set. Well, that, that's amazing because like you, I do hear that a lot, you know, that people say, I'd love to homeschool, but I'm just not patient enough. And like you, I, I struggle with being impatient as well. So I can really relate to the, to the answer that you gave there. Um, and one of the questions I wanted to ask you was how has educating your children at home changed you? Is there any other thing that you can think of that any other way that you've grown as a mother, as a woman through home education? Um, yeah, I think the only other thing I would add is that I feel like childhood is such a magical period. Um, and so I just know that like the life that we're living right now, like these difficult days of raising young kids, like one day, inshallah, we'll look back and what we're living in right now are actually the good old days. Like these will soon, inshallah, become the good days that we look back on. Um, and because homeschooling in this way really forces you to slow down um, and again, be very intentional about what you're doing and to be a little bit selfish about what you pursue and how you pursue it and being okay doing things differently from the status quo. I feel like it just somehow prolongs this childhood period. Like you're spending more time with your kids than you might normally have otherwise. Um, you're spending time in a very efficient way. It's not just like sitting together or watching TV together, which there's a time and place for that, but um, being intentional about how you're spending your time, being okay with being selfish about where you allocate time towards and where you remove time from. Um, it just makes, like, we're just living in what I think is a beautiful moment and one day we're gonna look back and really cherish these days. So that realization just makes these difficult. And I know like the early stages of childhood are very difficult for most parents, um, but just that realization that these are the good old days makes it easier to understand just how precious these days are. So what would you say to someone who, who thinks that when you homeschool your children, you're keeping them in this bubble that you're not exposing them to the real world. Have you ever come across anyone say that to you? Yeah, like every day. <laughs> um, I think this will go back to something that I read online um, from the Stark Raving Dad. Um, mm -hmm. He has a great Instagram page and a podcast where 
you just have to like throw the question back at them. So if you think homeschooling is like sheltering your child and not preparing them for the real world, um, do you think that being in a classroom with peers of the same age is the solution to like combat that? Like, do you think that being in a classroom with children who are all more or less the same age, maybe from the same socioeconomic background, um, do you think growing up in that very structured environment best prepares a child for the real world? Um, and the other answer that I give people is that homeschooling doesn't happen at home. Home Homeschooling happens in the community. Like every week we're going out, my daughter is becoming more confident in speaking with adults, with teenagers, asking questions when she doesn't understand stuff. Um, and if you take a step back and think, what skills does my child actually need to succeed in whatever the world might look like 20 years from now, um, regardless of the nitty gritty ways of what the world will look like at the end of the day, if they are malleable, if they're flexible, if they are focused on, if they know who they are and they're f- focused on their purpose and they don't feel compelled to just do what the status quo is doing and they know how to ask good questions, they know how to pursue those questions, they know how to look for answers and to learn from the people and places and things around them, then I feel like that's it. Like that's literally all that they need. And despite whatever the world might look like 20 years from now, we've given them the toolkits to the toolkit to to live in that world. Um, and to me, like that idea is a lot more appealing than the idea of putting my child in a in four a four room classroom and having them sit there at a desk without talking for hours a day. Yeah. I mean, do you do you wholeheartedly believe that homeschooling gives your children all of those things that you said? Or do you ever have doubts about about what you're doing? I wholeheartedly believe that this is the route that um, will get me there. However, I know that in reality, each day of homeschooling doesn't align with that. Like, we just have to be honest and say that some days are off, some days we lose our patience, some days we, you know, miss the mark on connection, we focus on the wrong thing, some days, um, you know, some days are not the perfect, picture perfect Instagram worthy photos. Um, But again, like, if we are whole, if we wholeheartedly believe in our purpose and our intention, then, and we keep revisiting that purpose and intention and asking how aligned are we with that, then even on the days where we feel like we've missed the mark, it's easier to come back on track. I'm, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'm assuming that when you first started homeschooling, you probably had a lot of preconceived ideas of what, what it would look like, of what your days right. would look like, how your children would learn. Um, and you've already said that you have changed things up this year. Are there any ways that homeschooling has differed from your expectations when you first began? Yes, so much. Um, So prior to homeschooling, we started in January of 2021. So in the few months um, at the end of 2020, I spent a lot of time on Instagram looking at other homeschooling families. I watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos, listened to podcasts and Um, I remember like, it's kind of funny now, but I remember thinking that I'll take like the extra room in our house and I'll convert that into the school room. And um, I even went window shopping for like what desk my kids would need. And um, I had like ideas about, you know, chalkboard paint for the wall and dry erase boards and dry erase markers and all the supplies I would need. Um, And we started off that way, actually, for the first few months before realizing that, you know what, like this isn't like this is a type of homeschool, but it's not the homeschool that is going to work for this family. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, just revisiting, not being afraid to shift gears a bit. I really, I know you didn't ask this question yet, but of the top resources that um, I would recommend or that have meant the most to me um, was the launch your homeschool course that you offer. Um, I think in the months prior to starting homeschool, I just had like a ton of information. Like I'm one of those people who loves research and I love, you know, collecting screenshots of things, taking notes when I read things online. So I had like a lot of information and I literally like this analogy just fits so well. I really felt like I was drowning in the different types of homeschool information out there. 
Um, and when I found out about the launch your homeschool course, it really felt like I was given a lifeline and I was told it's okay. Like you can breathe. And I think <laughs> that course, yeah, that course, like what was so special about it is just like the name says, it helps you launch. It helps you get started. Um, and the way that I started isn't necessarily like where I'm at right now, 18 months down the line. Um, but without that ability to just say, look, slow down, breathe, let's take it one step at a time. Um, where are you trying to go with your homeschool? How can you just get started in these first few months? Um, the course helped me answer all of those questions. And um, over time, as the months went by, because I had already written down what the purpose of the homeschool was and what I wanted to achieve with my children, um, when it was time to make changes, when I was no longer in the launch phase and it was okay to like make these changes, I just had a lot more confidence about doing it. Um, and I started to, to realize the reason why there's so much information out there is because there are so many different types of families and all families are unique. And the way that one Instagram family does it is going to be different from some YouTube family. And um, it's really about coming into cognizance about your family, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you want to achieve, and building a homeschool around that and not just trying to replicate what I find online. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you for that shout out for Launch Your Homeschool. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I'm so glad that it was helpful to you in those beginning stages. Um, I can totally relate to how you started as well. I think a lot of us can. That idea of, of putting a classroom together, it being very ordered and structured, because as a mother, that gives you a lot of comfort to know that mm -hmm. everything is set up in a particular way. You have this plan and it looks like something that's very familiar to you. Um, but actually now I'm at a point now where I look on Instagram and if I see somebody's Instagram page where it's too perfect, I just do not follow them or I unfollow <laughs> them because I, I inside it feels uncomfortable because I know mm. that, that is not reality and it's a little bit too photoshopped for me. And I, I'm right. sure that they are not doing that intentionally. That's just they are somebody who really loves beauty and they like to share beauty. And that's wonderful. But for me, I, I like the real. I like the raw. And that's you know one of the reasons why I love your account. And I brought you on here because I knew you would be honest and truthful with the audience about what homeschooling is really like. Um, so you've mentioned my course, which again, I appreciate, but do you have any other favorite homeschooling resources you could share with us? Um, so I mentioned your course. Um, I mentioned Start Craving Dad. Mm. Um, and then like, yeah, he has a great Instagram page and a podcast that I recently started listening to. Um, and again, like they unschool, so they're a lot less structured than I am. Um, but one thing that I really appreciate with him is that he makes you stop and ask the question why like if people are if people are worried that your kids aren't going to be well socialized like why um if people think that they you need to send your kid to a traditional school like why and even if again our hows are different the way he homeschools is different from the way i homeschool the reminder of like that question why 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 just helps me realign with my purpose so that's the second resource that i would name um, and the third one is the Wild and Free podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the podcast that I think I first started listening to maybe a year before I started homeschooling. Um, but what I liked about this was just hearing, again, all of the different types of homeschools that were out there, um, learning how other moms did it, how they were able to get past, you know, the questions from their communities and their family members, um, and just, again, focus on what mattered the most to them. Um, I would take this with a grain of salt because I think it's very easy to listen to the podcast and think this is exactly what I need to do. And you can get really caught up in that. Um, but once you've established what makes sense for your family, I think it's really helpful to have other families and other perspectives that you listen to that sort of help you um, fall back in line with what's the most important to you. Oh, thank you so much, Nsebo. So I will put the links for those resources in the show notes. And yeah, I agree with you there that there is a fine, there's a fine line, isn't there, between being inspired by some of these podcasts and then losing your own focus, losing your own purpose. Um, and you have to judge that yourself where you're at. Um, so what advice would you give to yourself, Nasaba? So if you were to go back in time a year, two years, three years, 
when you first started to think about homeschooling your kids, when that seed was first planted, what would you tell yourself? What do you wish you had known? Um, or maybe what would you do differently now? Um, I think it would be to slow down. Like there really is no, there's no race that we're a part of. There's no, um, you know, like benchmark that you have to hit by a certain time period. We're not trying to just replicate school at home. Um, and I think one thing that a lot of homeschool families, myself included, get caught up in is this idea of outdoing traditional school that like, okay, if I'm going to homeschool my kids, it's because I feel that homeschooling is better than a normal school. Um, and to show that I'm going to, you know, be very intentional and very on top of things to make sure my kids are, you know, one or two years ahead in their reading level, like all of that, honestly, like doesn't matter. And it took me, you know, I'm still learning this lesson, to be honest, but it took me at least 12 to 15 months to even start understanding that we're not trying to outdo schools we're really just trying to do what's best for our families um and i think if i could go back to you know younger me from a couple of years ago it would be to focus on connection focus on um, understanding my children as individuals um, and the quote that again is one of my favorite quotes is they'll forget what you said they'll forget what you did but they'll always remember how you made them feel well, that is absolutely beautiful. And on that note, I think we will wrap it up for today. Please tell everyone where they can find you online. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at that Muslim homeschool family. And please feel free to send me a DM. I love hearing from people from all over the world. Wasn't that wonderful? And I hope you will connect with Naseba on her Instagram account. I've left the link for that in the show notes. And as she mentioned, she is a part of my online homeschooling course for Muslim parents, which is called Launch Your Homeschool. And enrollment for that program is reopening for a very short period of time, starting from the 29th of July. So if you would like to register your interest for that course and get more information sent to you when the doors open, then visit launchyourhomeschool.com and pop your email address down there and more information will be sent to you. Well, that is all for today. And thank you so much for joining us here today. Have a beautiful week. Assalamu alaikum.